Greetings all on this Wednesday, July 15th, middle of July already. The time continues to fly on by, doesn't it? So taking this time again on this Wednesday just to come to you with some of God's words as uh, that encouragement, that direction, that reminder of what uh, God desires from us as his disciples. Today I just want to share a couple of verses from uh, the, the book, the New Testament book of Hebrews. Again, I was kind of confusing. I always think back to those catechism questions when we're reviewing, you know, the books of the Bible and the languages that uh, the Bible was written in. You think about the, the two parts of the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, two teachings of the Bible, law and gospel. Uh, and it isn't that you find only the law in the Old Testament and the Ten Commandments and only the gospel in the New Testament. There's law and gospel uh, in the Old Testament throughout. The New Testament also has that law, that reminder, Jesus highlighting the greatest laws, the most important laws, uh, which is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself, right? And then the gospel in a nutshell, John 3.16, God so loved the world. Uh, so you have those aspects of the parts of the Bible uh, and the, the teachings. And then also you think about the language, right? Old Testament written in the Hebrew, New Testament written in the Greek. Uh, so that's where we read from the book of Hebrews, but it's not Old Testament. It's actually New Testament written to the Hebrews, written to the Jewish people, again, who um, were, were part of God's chosen people of the Old Testament times who were struggling with this identifying Jesus Christ, this new way, uh, what it meant to be a Christian, uh, giving up, uh, forgetting, um, not, not following the Old Testament ways anymore. And so this was part of the struggle, and this is part of the content as the writer to the Hebrews was inspired by the Holy Spirit to give that uh, direction, encouragement, to set Jesus up as the high priest, the one when you compare Jesus to all the other high priests that have served throughout the history of Israel to the Hebrews, that there isn't a greater high priest than Jesus. And the focus of holding on then, holding on and professing that faith, that trust. So that's what these words highlight today. So we're reading again from Hebrews chapter 4, uh, verses 14, 15, and 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Again, three verses, very powerful, very encouraging. What a, what a tremendous uh, reminder. Uh, again, a couple things to highlight as we think about those verses. Again, if you're looking at your Bibles, it's Hebrews chapter 4. I just read verses 14, 15, and 16. Verse 14, we heard that direction, to hold firmly to the faith we profess. And again, an important reminder today, because often we're uh, basically pressured, pushed to let go of a lot of the faith we profess because it might not be politically correct. It might not uh, come across as being uh, tolerant and acceptable of so many things that the world wants us to accept today. And again, God comes to us in these words through his living word and reminds us all um, that when we recognize what Christ has done, we hold firmly to that faith that we profess. We hold firmly and we, we don't let anyone take it away from us because it is that incredible saving gift from God and it's that faith that, again, guides us and encourages us. So we hold firmly to that faith. Then the next verse, we, we were given that uh, reminder that as we look at Jesus and we're reminded of what, what he did, how he came here, uh, right? He, he, he lived. He didn't pretend to be a human. He was like us in every way except was without sin. He was perfect in every way, but he was one of us. Uh, he, he was born, right? Uh, he, he, he lived, he, he went through all those stages of infancy, total dependency on his parents, growing up as a toddler, a young child, to a adolescent, to the struggles of young adulthood. He experienced it all. 
the one thing he didn't experience, of course, was old age because, well, he was crucified, right? At age 33, they nailed him to a cross. But does he understand pain? Yeah. Does he understand the suffering of death? Yes. Does he understand all the temptations that you and I face every day? Yeah. He was tempted in every way, just like you and I were, except, thankfully, for our benefit, for our salvation, he was sinless. Never once, at one moment, did he forget, make a mistake. He was unswerving in his perfection and his holiness, so that when the time was right and everything was fulfilled, he was able to offer himself as that perfect sacrifice, the great high priest offering himself as that perfect sacrifice for once for you and I. He gave his life so that you and I could have the assurance that salvation is ours. So the writer then tells us in that last verse then, so we approach the throne of grace, God's grace, that undeserved love. We do so with confidence. Right? We have this confidence because we're reminded, look at what Christ was willing to do for us. So we approach the throne of grace with confidence for one simple purpose, that we might receive his mercy and find the grace to help us in our time of need. That we have God's undeserved love for us, especially, especially in those times of need when we're really struggling, when we're really lost, when we're really battling with different things. Um, does God care? Yes, he does. And we, we can approach his throne and call upon him and we can say, help. And he listens, and he's willing to help us. Um, we, 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 we come and we find his grace. We have that grace, that undeserved love of God every day, but especially in our time of need, right? That, that's when it's made so evident, and we are reminded that I know I don't deserve God's help. I know because of my sin, my wickedness, I have no right to come to God and say, Lord, will you help me? But because of what Christ has done, we hold to that faith, hold unswervingly, and we turn to him. He who has gone through it all, who understands what it is to live on this earth, to, to, to be like one of us in every way, and to understand that Satan was relentless in tempting Jesus, because all he needed to do was stumble at just one point, one little thing, and Satan would have won. So Satan was after Jesus every day. So does he understand temptation? Does he understand those attacks that Satan puts before us in this sin-filled world against my own sinful flesh? Does he get it? Yes, he understands it. And so we turn to him. We approach his altar. We approach him with confidence and trust in his mercy and his grace because remember, he's done it. He's already paid the price. He announced on the cross, it is finished. His grace is real and it's there for us. And he's there to help us, especially in those times of need. And there's lots of needs out there today where we continue to deal with the struggles of this pandemic. We continue to deal with the effects of this and the, the sidebar effects, the ripple effects, whatever you want to refer to it as, uh, and different things go, going on, uh, challenges people have with uh, getting the right kind of medical help nowadays. That, that's ending up being a real hard challenge because of the pandemic. Uh, trying to get things back to, to normal, uh, regular jobs, regular routines, regular schedules. You know, what, what's going to happen here in a few weeks when school is scheduled to start? What's going to happen with those kids? What are parents going to be doing? Uh, some of the challenges, right? The, that lack of social interaction a lot of people have been dealing with. We're starting to hear uh, a lot of alarm bells, uh, concerns going up. Uh, sadly, tragically, tragically. Uh, in, increase in, in suicide now, especially young young people. And part of this is because we've forgotten this beautiful truth. We have our Savior, Jesus. He is that great high priest, and he cares, and he knows. He knows the temptations we face. He knows the dirty tricks that Satan loves to pull at us and to try and get us to, to give up. And He's coming and saying no, and we can approach his throne every day. We can approach it with confidence because of his mercy and love. So may God grant us that opportunity, that time to, to do just that, to keep on coming to God. Pray without ceasing, call upon him, seek those blessings. And again, know that grace is there. It's real. 
and, and how important and wonderful that is. Uh, may God be with you on this uh, Wednesday. Again, we're looking forward to this coming week uh, for, for those that can join us for inline service. We're all ready now, as I mentioned, the middle of the month, third Sunday of the uh, month coming up. So again, for our communicant members, we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper in our worship service. Uh, I am making some contacts and some visits with some of our uh, members that I have not been able to join us with the inline or in-person worship services and setting up time either for them uh, privately to come by and uh, set up an appointment to celebrate uh, the Lord's Supper uh, in private communion at church in my office or Again, uh, if you're comfortable with that and everything is good, uh, please don't hesitate to give me a call and set up a time for me to stop by your place and give you uh, Holy Communion that way as well. Otherwise, if you're able uh, and everything is good, you can join us this Sunday. Uh, we'll be celebrating uh, our worship with the Lord's Supper and then also moving into our next Bible study as we focus on Jesus, our great high priest, who also announces, I am the good shepherd, right? The 23rd Psalm. He is my shepherd. He guides, he helps us. Uh, that'll be part of our focus with our Bible study on Sunday. And then just one other final uh, note, reminder, uh, heading into next week, actually, I'm going to uh, not only keep on doing the Wednesday online devotions, but I uh, have a couple of folks, some uh, prospects interested in uh, getting to know more about the Bible, so I am starting up another one of our Bible information classes. That's going to begin this next Wednesday. Uh, we're going to be meeting at church. We'll have the tables spread out, uh, and you can join us 6.30 p.m., on Wednesday night starting next week, and we're going to get back into uh, the basic Bible study, uh, sharing some of the basic truths of the scriptures, that doctrine, teaching, and what it all means for us. So you're sure welcome to join us, um, and uh, just know that that's happening. Uh, prayers, blessings to all. Stay safe, stay healthy. God's blessings. Let's close then with that blessing from God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Have a great Wednesday evening. God's blessings to you all. Thank you.